Ever notice how the spotlight of accusations about racism always seems to be pointed at Europe and the US? They're the ones often in the hot seat, navigating reforms and discussions to tackle the issue head on. But guess what? There's a sneaky player in this game of shadows, the Arab world. From the bustling streets of Egypt to the vibrant markets of Morocco and the oil-rich lands of Kuwait, being black in the Arab world can be a tough ride. Picture this. Slurs, sneers and degradation could follow you to the market, dance with you at your job or even settle in next to you at the cinema. But why aren't many people talking about it? And why is the Arab world so adept at keeping this dark chapter of human history under wraps? In this video, we're about to unravel the layers of racism woven into the fabric of the Arab world. We're shining a light on why Afro-Arabs find themselves relegated to the status of second-class citizens. But that's not all. We're also diving into the closets of history that Arabs have been desperately trying to keep locked away. Away from the prying eyes of the world. So, grab your metaphorical flashlight because we're about to embark on a journey through the hushed corridors of racism in the Arab world. Join us as we expose the untold stories, challenge the silence, and unravel the complex web of discrimination that Afro-Arabs face daily. It's time to confront the uncomfortable truths and uncover why the Arab world wants to sweep this chapter under the rug. Also, as a way of supporting the channel, hit the like button of the video, share and subscribe to help the channel grow. Your support means a lot to us. Before we dive into the unsettling reality of anti-black racism in present-day Arab societies, we need to navigate the murky waters of a taboo subject, the historical connection between Arabs and black people. While one might assume it to be rooted in trade or cultural exchanges, the truth is far more traumatic. Brace yourselves for a journey through the chapters of the Arab slave trade, a dark period when Arabs traversed the unforgiving Sahara Desert, capturing black individuals to fuel the growth of their nations. The early days of the Arab slave trade, a time when the concept of human beings as commodities began to take shape. It was not just about trading goods, it was about trading lives. The Arabs, seeking to bolster their economies and expand their influence, turned their attention to the vast lands south of the Sahara. As caravans carved their way through the desert, a sinister enterprise unfolded, the capturing and enslavement of black Africans. In the heart of the Sahara, Arab slave traders ventured into communities, tearing families apart and shackling individuals who would soon become part of a dehumanizing trade network. This wasn't merely a transaction of labor, it was the brutal uprooting of lives, a disruption that would echo through generations. The early days of the Arab slave trade marked the beginning of a dark legacy that continues to cast its shadow over the present. Egypt, Morocco, Kuwait and many other Arab countries participated as key players in a chilling trade that echoes through time. In the early days, these countries weren't just bystanders, they were right in the thick of it. Egypt, with the Nile as its ancient lifeline, became a pivotal point for enslaved individuals, marching through the Sahara towards an uncertain fate. The echoes of that time still linger along the riverbanks, a silent witness to a trade that treated people as commodities. Jumping westward, you will find that behind the scenes of Morocco. Marrakesh, with its lively souks and grand palaces, hides a history stained by the trade in black lives. Picture the market squares, once alive with vibrant colors, now holding the weight of a past that sought economic prosperity at the expense of human suffering. Slavery in Arab countries was abolished completely by 1970, with the exception of Mauritania, which did so in 1981. The end of the Arab slave trade did not signal an end to the complexities it birthed. Instead, it left an indelible mark on the collective consciousness of these nations. The scars of this history linger, shaping the dynamics of race and identity in contemporary Arab societies. The present-day manifestation of anti-black racism finds its roots in the legacy of this traumatic connection echoing through the streets of Cairo, Marrakesh and Kuwait City. Racism in Arab media. In the media all over Arab countries, racism is openly displayed even in the holy month. In the sacred month of Ramadan, a time when Muslims worldwide observe fasting and spiritual reflection, an unfortunate and recurring trend has marred the airwaves across the Arab world. Despite the intended promotion of family-friendly content during this period, 
instances of racist mockery and derogatory language against Afro-Black Arabs and Black African migrants persistently infiltrate the television screens of millions of Arab households. The year 2018 was the most outrageous, with two prominent Ramadan TV series, Azmi Weyashgan and Block Gashmara, standing out for their offensive content. The Egyptian comedy series Azmi Weyashgan, created by the controversial producer Ahmed El Sobki, drew widespread condemnation for repeatedly featuring its lead actors donning blackface. Additionally, the series employed racist language, including the use of the N-word, and portrayed black individuals as servants who spoke broken Arabic and practiced sorcery. The implications of such content extended beyond mere entertainment, perpetuating harmful stereotypes and reinforcing discriminatory attitudes towards Afro-black Arabs. Similarly, the Kuwaiti comedy series Block Gashmara dedicated an entire episode to actors in blackface portraying Sudanese people as lazy and cynical. This episode fueled outrage on social media, with viewers expressing their discontent over the perpetuation of harmful stereotypes. Despite the public outcry, the film crews behind both series staunchly defended their work. Ahmed Mohi, the script reader of Azmi We Ashgan, downplayed the racial slurs, claiming that the show did not aim to insult any part of the Egyptian people. Meanwhile, Kuwaiti actor Hassan al-Balam, involved in the controversial episode of Block Gashmara, apologized on Instagram, but asserted that the criticism against him was exaggerated. These instances of racial insensitivity and offensive content were not isolated incidents, but reflective of a pervasive issue deeply rooted in Arab popular culture and cinema. The use of blackface, racist language, and degrading portrayals of Afro-black Arabs and black African migrants has been a long-standing problem in the region's media. Examining the historical context reveals a troubling pattern of anti-black racism in Arab cinema spanning decades. Examples abound, such as the 2001 Egyptian film Africano, where a lead character remarks, is there a power cut in there or what, upon seeing a group of black people leaving a nightclub? Similarly, the 2005 Egyptian film Ayal Habiba, Lover Kids, features characters making derogatory remarks about a Sudanese man, played by an Arab in blackface, perpetuating harmful stereotypes and reinforcing discriminatory attitudes towards Afro-black Arabs. Black individuals in Arab cinema are consistently cast into subordinate roles, reduced to servitude, housemaids, prostitutes, clowns, and doorkeepers working for affluent families. The derogatory depictions extend to their physical appearance, with black men and women portrayed as dirty and sluggish, subject to racist mockery, and associated with bad look. Such representations contributed to the dehumanization of Afro-black Arabs and black African migrants, perpetuating harmful stereotypes that have real-world consequences. Even black children have not been spared from racial mockery in Arab cinema. The 2003 Egyptian comedy Eli Bali Balak, My Thoughts Are Your Thoughts, features a protagonist addressing his wife after mistaking a black maid's child for his own, saying, You are white and I am white. How could we have this bar of dates as a child? This scene reflects the deep-seated biases present in Arab cinema, where skin color is used as a basis for ridiculing and demeaning individuals. The issue is further exacerbated by the practice of Arab washing, mirroring Hollywood's notorious whitewashing, where non-black Arabs are cast in black roles. This often involves actors donning blackface, exaggerated fake features, and engaging in racial caricatures that reinforce negative stereotypes. The pervasive use of blackface in Arab cinema contrasts sharply with the trend in the United States, where the practice has largely been phased out. Remarkably, for decades, the first and only dark-skinned actor to play leading roles in Egyptian cinema was Ahmed Zaki. Even he did not escape racial characterization, being nicknamed the Bronze Star and the Black Tiger. Back in 2008, when Adel al kalbani a black Saudi imam, was appointed to lead prayers at the Grand Mosque in Mecca, you'd think it would be celebrated as a step towards inclusivity. But no, instead he faced a storm of racial insults, with some Muslims openly protesting his appointment. Imagine that, a spiritual leader facing backlash just because of the color of his skin. It's a stark reminder that racism is alive and well, even in the holiest of places. Now, the ripple effects of this kind of discrimination go beyond hurtful comments. They seep into the fabric of society, affecting young black individuals who struggle to find positive role models. 
Flip through the channels or scroll through mainstream media and you'll notice a stark lack of representation for Afro-black Arabs. This absence leaves a void, making it challenging for young people to see themselves reflected in the media landscape. The consequences are not just about feeling left out, they're about grappling with a social stigma that pushes some to disassociate themselves from their black identity. It's disheartening to see individuals deny their African heritage, engaging in intra-racial racism, striving to assimilate, and shockingly, even resorting to skin bleaching in an attempt to fit into societal norms. It's like a silent struggle happening right before our eyes, one that many might choose to overlook. But the impact goes beyond identity crises. This racism extends its claws into the lives of migrants and migrant workers, subjecting them to unthinkable hardships. Take the harrowing stories of Ethiopian women in Lebanon, subjected to abuse and exploitation, or the shocking practices of torture and slavery faced by African migrants in Libya. These are not isolated incidents, they are manifestations of a centuries-old undercurrent of entrenched racism in Arab countries. Racism in Morocco. Morocco is a country that still holds on to its slavery past and continues to deny that racism exists in the country. However, in daily life, racist terms and derogatory labels are used to refer to black Moroccans, diminishing their worth and humanity. This language, rooted in historical prejudices, reflects a lack of understanding and empathy. The animalization of black people in Morocco is not infrequent. Black individuals are sometimes compared to animals like monkeys and pigs, reducing them to dehumanizing stereotypes. This treatment is especially targeted at migrants from sub-Saharan Africa, making them feel like outsiders. They can be called Kurd, Kanzir, Akil Lahmi al-Basha, and Haiwan. These words refer to them as monkey, pig, cannibal, and animal. They may be greeted by the sounds monkeys supposedly make, which is described as Guera, Guera. The heritage of black Moroccans is frequently denied and accosted with the veiled attack of the phrase Menenti, where are you from, said by their fellow citizens as if true Moroccans are all white. Black Moroccans often face questions about their origins that imply they don't belong in the country. This exclusionary attitude denies their heritage and makes it harder for them to feel like valued members of society. Surprisingly, the history of slavery, the diversity of the population, and racism are not taught in schools or discussed openly. This silence perpetuates ignorance and prevents progress in addressing discrimination. Racism in Egypt. In 2018, Mohamed Azmi, the director of the Egyptian Monitoring Center on Racism, unveiled a disturbing reality about the state of racial representation in Egyptian media. The results of an extensive investigation conducted in collaboration with co-authors shed light on a deeply entrenched issue that permeated various forms of media, from news reports to talk shows and movies. The findings were disheartening, revealing a pervasive trend of disparagement and mockery directed at individuals with dark skin or those who spoke in the Upper Egyptian dialect. The study, which spanned the decade from 2007 to 2017, revealed a disconcerting pattern in Egyptian cinema. Nearly half of the films produced during this period were found to perpetuate stereotypes and negative portrayals of people with dark skin or those hailing from Upper Egypt. Individuals from this region were consistently relegated to stereotypical roles, often depicted as janitors or servants. This not only reinforced harmful stereotypes, but also contributed to the marginalization of a significant portion of the Egyptian population. A particularly distressing aspect of the investigation focused on the use of racist language and hate speech in media content. Approximately one-third of the talk shows and news reports produced between 2011 and 2016, specifically addressing topics related to Upper Egypt, were found to contain elements of racism. The prevalence of such language further exacerbated the discriminatory narrative, perpetuating harmful stereotypes and fostering a hostile environment for those targeted. Perhaps one of the most alarming revelations from the study was the stark underrepresentation of individuals with dark skin in media jobs. The report highlighted the virtual absence of diverse voices within the industry, pointing to a systemic issue that extended beyond on-screen portrayals. The dearth of opportunities for people with dark skin not only limited their visibility but also hindered their ability to influence the narrative and challenge prevailing stereotypes. Racism in Tunisia 
In 2018, the Tunisian parliament took a historic step by approving a law aimed at combating racial discrimination, making Tunisia the second African country, after South Africa, and the first Arab nation to adopt such legislation. Known as Law No. 11 2018, its primary objective is to eradicate all forms of racial discrimination and their manifestations. The law underscores the importance of preserving human dignity and achieving equality among individuals in their enjoyment of rights and fulfillment of duties. By penalizing incitement to violence, hatred, discrimination and racism, as well as the dissemination of ideas based on racial discrimination, the legislation seeks to foster a more inclusive and tolerant society. The reason for this groundbreaking law traces back to 2016 and the case of Sabrina, a black Tunisian who experienced verbal abuse on Habib Bourguiba Avenue in downtown Tunis. Shockingly, when Sabrina attempted to report the crime to the police, she was turned away due to the absence of a specific law against racism. This incident underscored a glaring gap in Tunisia's legal framework, prompting a broader societal dialogue on the need for comprehensive anti-discrimination legislation. The urgency for legal measures against racism became even more apparent on December 25, 2016, when three Congolese students were brutally stabbed at a train station in Tunis. This shocking act of violence prompted civil society organizations to rally for change. Prime Minister Youssef Chahed expressed his support for anti-discrimination legislation the following day, signaling a commitment to address the deep-seated issue of racism within the country. However, it's crucial to recognize that these incidents are not isolated. The documentary, Tunisia's Dirty Secret, by Al Jazeera sheds light on the pervasive racism that many Tunisians face in their daily lives. The film captures the experiences of individuals like Hamza, who, equipped with a hidden camera in his glasses, faced derogatory remarks from passers-by. The blatant racism manifested in slurs and insults, reflecting the harsh reality that black Tunisians and migrants contend with regularly. Notably, the documentary unveils troubling practices, such as some towns in the south of Tunisia, like Sidi Makhlouf in Medanine, implementing separate school buses for black children. This segregation in education underscores the deeply rooted nature of racial discrimination, permeating even the most fundamental aspects of daily life. Such practices not only perpetuate inequality, but also contribute to the marginalization of black Tunisians from an early age. The underrepresentation of black Tunisians in the public sphere further highlights the systemic nature of racism in the country. As of 2018, there was only one black member of parliament, Jamila Debek Siksi from Enada, signaling a lack of diversity within the political landscape. Moreover, the first black newsreader on state-run TV did not appear until 2018. These instances of underrepresentation underscore the challenges faced by black Tunisians in accessing opportunities and positions of influence within the broader societal framework. In Tunisia, the absence of official recognition of race has contributed to a lack of statistical data on the black population, making it challenging to understand the extent of racial discrimination and socio-economic disparities. However, recent survey data from the Afrobarometer conducted in April-May 2018 sheds light on the situation. Out of 1,199 respondents, approximately 8% were classified as black. These findings reveal that black Tunisians face significant socio-economic challenges compared to their counterparts. They are disproportionately located in rural areas, with a 10 percentage point difference compared to other Tunisians. Additionally, they are 15 percentage points less likely to own essential items such as radios, cars or computers. Education also emerges as a significant factor, with black Tunisians being approximately 10% less likely to have completed primary school. The most alarming statistic is the unemployment rate, where black Tunisians are almost twice as likely to be unemployed at 42% than other Tunisians at 25%. This economic disparity contributes to widespread poverty among black Tunisians, limiting their access to higher education and exacerbating their exclusion from various sectors of public life. Beyond economic challenges, black Tunisians also face severe underrepresentation in politics, media and other spheres. The consequences of this underrepresentation extend beyond mere exclusion. Many black Tunisians become targets of verbal abuse and violence due to their visibility. In southern Tunisia, the situation is particularly dire 
as the black community often resides in isolated areas, such as Gosba village, compounding their marginalization. Adding to the complexity of the issue is the conflation of black Tunisians with sub-Saharan African migrants. This conflation, fueled by the invisibility of black Tunisians in public life, leads to a common assumption in Tunisian society that all black individuals in the country are of sub-Saharan origin. This misconception further hampers the recognition of black Tunisians and exacerbates their challenges. Sub-Saharan migrants themselves face distinct challenges, including racial discrimination, language barriers, documentation issues, and limited access to education and healthcare. Many of these migrants are fleeing humanitarian crises and conflicts, transiting through North Africa with the hope of continuing to Europe. However, whether they intend to transit or stay in Tunisia for study and economic reasons, they often find themselves residing in the country for extended periods. The visibility of these migrants is compounded by the overarching assumption that they are all of sub-Saharan origin. Tragically, racial discrimination in Tunisia has resulted in violent incidents, as exemplified by the death of prominent anti-racism campaigner Faliku Koulibaly in December 2018. Koulibaly, the president of the Association of Ivorians in Tunisia, AIT, was stabbed to death in Tunis. While authorities attributed the killing to a theft, Koulibaly's death sparked demonstrations by hundreds of black Tunisians protesting against racist discrimination in the country and the perceived lack of a robust government response in an effort to address the pervasive racial discrimination. The minority rights group, MRG, has documented hundreds of cases against black Tunisians and sub-Saharan migrants in 2019 and 2020 through its anti-discrimination points network. The plight of these communities has garnered international attention, and a demonstration in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement was organized by Menemti and other groups in Tunisia in June 2020, marking the first of its kind in the region. The Kafala system. The Kafala system, prevalent in Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, United Arab Emirates, as well as Jordan and Lebanon Arab countries, is a sponsorship system that ties a migrant worker's legal status to their employer. This system has been widely criticized for fostering conditions that leave individuals vulnerable to exploitation and abuse. It is a system that promotes racism and has been termed modern slavery. The case of a black migrant worker highlights the challenges faced by many in attempting to change employers despite enduring exploitative conditions. Under the Kafala system, a migrant worker's legal residency and work status are entirely dependent on their sponsoring employer. This creates an imbalanced power dynamic as the employer holds significant control over the worker's ability to stay in the country and work. The inherent flaw in this system is that it grants employers unchecked authority, often leading to situations of abuse and exploitation. Black migrants in particular often find themselves disproportionately affected by the kafala system. The system, when combined with racial biases, can result in the de facto relegation of black migrant workers to a position akin to modern-day slavery. The vulnerabilities of black migrants are exacerbated by discriminatory attitudes prevalent in certain societies, perpetuating racial stereotypes and unequal treatment. One key issue is the difficulty faced by migrant workers, including black individuals, in changing employers. This restriction severely limits the worker's ability to escape abusive or exploitative conditions. Employers can wield this power to maintain control over their employees, knowing that the threat of losing their job also means jeopardizing their legal status in the country. The exploitation of black migrant workers under the kafala system manifests in various forms, including long working hours, inadequate living conditions, and meager wages. Reports of physical and verbal abuse are not uncommon, and the fear of reprisals often prevents victims from seeking help or reporting such incidents. The kafala system not only perpetuates modern-day slavery, but also contributes to the promotion of racism within the host countries. The power dynamics established by the system can be manipulated to reinforce existing racial hierarchies, with black migrant workers facing systemic discrimination and limited access to legal recourse. Human rights organizations and activists have been vocal in their condemnation of the kafala system. Calls for comprehensive legal reforms aim to address the root causes of exploitation and discrimination embedded in this sponsorship system. 
The introduction of an anti-racism law in Tunisia serves as an example that legislative measures can play a crucial role in addressing systemic issues. While legislation alone is not a panacea, it can set the tone for societal change and encourage conversations around racial equality. Other Arab nations could consider similar legal measures to demonstrate a commitment to eradicating racism and fostering inclusivity. In the Gulf, where economic prosperity has led to a multicultural influx of people, promoting diversity and combating racism is vital for sustainable development. Recognizing and valuing the contributions of individuals from diverse backgrounds can enhance social harmony and contribute to the overall well-being of these societies. Efforts to tackle racism should extend beyond legal frameworks to encompass educational initiatives and awareness campaigns. Promoting cultural understanding and celebrating diversity can help break down stereotypes and prejudices that contribute to discriminatory practices. In schools, workplaces and communities, fostering an environment of inclusivity and respect can contribute to dismantling deeply ingrained biases. Moreover, media plays a significant role in shaping perceptions and attitudes. Encouraging responsible and inclusive representation in media can challenge stereotypes and contribute to a more nuanced understanding of different racial and ethnic groups. By portraying diverse narratives, media can become a powerful tool for fostering empathy and breaking down barriers. While it's true that some Arab countries may not exhibit racism in the same overt manner as seen in certain European or Latin American nations, it does not absolve them of the responsibility to address and rectify existing issues. Recognizing the problem is the first step, and a collective effort involving government initiatives, civil society, and individuals is necessary to bring about meaningful change. This brings us to the end of this video. Tell us what you think in the comment section, as we are always interested in your thoughts. As always, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos to let more people know the truth about blacks and to hear their own part of the narratives. Thanks for watching.